It's a world tuna mini. There's the tuna. And looks like it has eight knobs, eight sliders, eight drum pads, a few buttons here, and a um, USB cord, some instructions. Yep, guess I'll be doing some reading. Hello, my name is Sip Mendes. Welcome to Sip's Techie Tips. And today I want to tell you about something I got in the mail, and that is the World Tuna Mini MIDI controller. And that was provided to me by Van Goa. And Van Goa is the biggest seller of world musical instruments. And so today we'll we'll take a good look at it. We'll go through. And um, I'm really excited to do this, so let's go ahead and go to the overhead camera. This is a small size controller. It is a little bit larger than my previous recorder. This is a World Panda Mini. And as you can tell, it's about the same height-wise. And width, it's, the new one is about almost two inches wider. This one only had four faders and four knobs, and the new one has eight and eight. This keyboard has 25 keys, that's black and white keys, that are velocity sensitive. That means that if you press them softly, you'll get a soft tone. As you press it harder, they will play louder. And it also has eight drum pads, and they too are velocity sensitive. Okay. It has eight sliders or faders and eight uh, knobs. And these are continuous turning knobs. That means they do not stop at either left or right. And that's usually a good thing. They work better with uh, digital audio workstations. And these can be used to control the characteristics and attributes through your digital audio workstation. And we'll look at that a little bit later. There are also some buttons over here. Oh, there's a, let's look at these here. There's also a pitch wheel and a modulation wheel. And these are very modern. They are not wheels at all. You just place your finger on them and move up or down and that will simulate or emulate a uh, velocity wheel or a modulation wheel. There's a few uh, buttons up here. This is middle C. This is the next C up. And this is the next C down. You can shift the entire keyboard down by pressing this once. And you'll notice that it blinks slowly. Press it twice, it blinks faster. That tells you you're two octaves down. Then three octaves down, it's very fast. And four octaves down. Nope, there's nothing there. These are the lowest keys. Then as you go back up, they will do the opposite. They'll slow down, slow down, and when they stop blinking, you're back to middle C. You can go up, faster, faster, and that's the highest notes. All right, so let's go back to center, the middle C. Now, this keyboard is programmable through a editor, and we'll look at that a little bit later. There's also a couple of connectors. There is a connector for USB, and this is the only power supply you will need. And there's also a connector for the uh, sustain pedal. Normally, when you press a key, 
it it dies as soon as you let up on the keys. Unlike organs that, that slow down slowly, pianos don't. But with a sustain pedal, if you let down on it, you step down on it, and you let up on the keys, the notes will continue and fade slowly. Let up on the note dies. Okay. There are presets that you can set up using the the uh, editor, and these are stored using this button to tell you if it's the first set of eight, or if you press it then you'll be addressing the second set of eight presets. I programmed some of these. If I hold shift down, it'll tell you that I am using the first set of presets. And I've also programmed a couple of the buttons. You'll notice that these buttons are different color than, uh, oh, let me do it right. You'll notice that these are a different color. This is red, and this is blue, but it won't show up very well on my camera. And these are the default colors. Curves, the, the keyboard also has velocity curves. The first set of velocity curves is set to be um, velocity sensitive. I've programmed set four not to be velocity sensitive. I, whenever I press this key or any of these keys, they will um, play at full volume. Whether I press it slow or I press it fast, they play at full volume every time. And we'll talk about those velocity curves a little bit later. And um, the keyboard is um, made of plastic. <laughs> Everything seems to be plastic. Mylars, and they seem to be of good quality. There is, um, the ends are made of a um, simulated wood finish. They have a simulated wood finish. And these feel like silicon rubber. Or they seem soft. And they're translucent, as you can tell by the by the light passing through them. So let's go look at the uh, editor. In order to set up your um, Tuna Mini, you need to go to the World website and download three things. You need to download the software editor for PC or Mac, the user manual, and also the Quick Start manual. And you can find all of those at en.world, with an E on the end, dot com dot cn. This is the World Tuna Editor. The first thing I'm going to do is going to go over here and set everything to the default values. This does have sections. The first section is called the Global Perimeters. And it says that this keyboard will output everything on channel 1, unless we set it to something else. It says that as far as octaves, he's going to go with 0, which means that that is middle C. Okay. Next, it says that my pads, which are... Uh, velocity sensitive is set to linear. There are four choices. Linear, logarithmic, exponential, and full. So for this part I'm going to set it to linear. Accelerator knobs. It says they're set to fast. I'm going to set them to medium. 
and the velocity curve for the rest of the keyboard is set to linear. Now I can set everything in here at one time by sending everything to this section over here called work area. Or I can send it to particular um, storage places. <laughs> okay, very good. But let's go a little bit further. Now most of the time when you set up one of these keyboards you want your keypad, your um, your key bed to be on one channel and you want your drums or drum pads to be on a different channel. I'm gonna set my drum pads to channel 3 and the way you set it is you click on channel on pad 1 you go here to global until it not to use the global but rather to send it to 3 and I'm gonna set all the other ones the same way Right, that takes care of them. I'm not going to change any other aspect about them at all. And um, let's see, these are my knobs. I will leave those alone for now. And these are my faders. I will leave those alone for now. Just for the fun of it, we're going to change the color of one of the buttons. We're going to go with button one. And this is how you set the colors. They're red, green, or blue. Just look at the last character, red, green, or blue. And this says it is sending equal amounts of light to the red, the green, or the blue. <coughs> and that results in white light. So I'm going to turn down the green to zero. And I'm going to turn the blue all the way down to zero for this single button. Okay, very good. Now, in the manual, there is a table that will show you how to make different colors. And simple ones, if you want green, change this to 100, change red to zero, and blue to zero. If you want a blue button, change blue to a hundred, green to zero, red to zero. Those are the simplest ones. <laughs> and uh, we'll, it's best to look at it in the manual. Now I'm gonna select work area. That means I'm gonna send all my settings to the keyboard. And I click on set keyboard. And I wait for this message, says it's been done and we'll click OK. Now, if I want to set, send a different set of settings, for instance, um, I want to make button 4, I want to make it green, I will set this to um, 0, I'll set my red to 0, I'll set my blue to zero and that should give me a green button but I'm only gonna send it send it to storage bank 4 so it's set and I'm gonna send it and it's been done and it says okay now if I want to save a set this information, if I want to set this information just the way it is, I can save a, save it to my hard drive. And I'm going to put it in this directory here. And I already have one called SIP settings. And I'm going to override that one. But I could just type in anything I want there. And I'm going to save it. It says I'm going to replace the one I already have 
If you don't already have one, it won't, you won't get this message. So yes, I'm going to replace it. So at some future time, if I want to, uh, if I've made many, many different changes and saved many different ones, I can reload by going to this one and just opening it. And it will reload that particular set of, of uh, settings. But I'm going to hit cancel and I'll leave that alone. And again, default will reset it the way, the way it came from the factory. And I'm going to close this. And um, that is all we need to do with the uh, World Tuna Editor. Now we are looking at our uh, Ableton Live 10 Lite. And I received this copy when I purchased another keyboard. If you want to get a trial version of this program, you need to go to the Ableton.com website and go to Downloads and download a trial version of it or any other product. And make sure it is the one for your computer if you're on a PC or a Macintosh. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to get our keyboard to communicate with our interface here. And if you notice that I click up here on the corner, there is activity. That means there is communication. There, Ableton has two screens. This is the one that looks like it's columns. And then there's a second screen that looks like uh, rows or tracks. This is track one, this is track two. When I click on a, on a key, you see there's activity here and here also but there isn't any uh, real sound coming in because there's no activity over here. To, to connect your keyboard to the um, digital audio workstation, go to Options, go down to Preferences, and these are tabs. And the tabs that we were most concerned about is this one called Link MIDI. And you can see that Control surface is set to none, input none, output none. It says that it is detecting uh, MIDI ports, an input called world and an output called world. And that is the keyboard that we're looking for. But, but we need to uh, tell it exactly what to use. <laughs> okay. So c for control surfaces, we want it to say none. There is a long list of predefined uh, keyboards, but um, Tuna Mini is not in the T's, and World Mini World is not in uh, the W's. So we want to leave that on none. If you pick one of the other ones, then it's going to use default settings uh, presets of its own, and they may not work for you very well. So. We'll leave that on none. Input, we want to set to world. Output, we want to set to world. The other choice in there, we're going to dis disregard for the moment. These three should be on. Track, sync, and remote. Track, sync, and remote. And that's all you need to do for it to communicate. Now, um, let's go over here and we'll look at these briefly. There's one called uh, Look and Feel. The only one I change is, is this one called Zoom Display. And that's so it makes these fonts in the interface larger. The default font is this size, which you can see is very small. And uh, as you go through other menus, you'll see that all of the choices in these menus is very small. It does not affect that. And uh, that's all I do. Other than that, I take all of the, um, the defaults that are set up. You can change this one also to dark or light. And I'm going to leave it on dark because it's easier to see on the screen. Now I'm going to go to audio. This is uh, your sound driver. I use DirectX. My computer is fast enough that I don't have any problems using DirectX. And it allows me to um, 
use other sound devices on my computer. I can play uh, a um, MP3 track or a uh, input from my mixer, and it works simultaneously. There is another one called ASIO, but which causes it to listen to only ASIO device drivers. And if you're having trouble with uh, lag time or latency, then you might want to use it. If it's not on your machine, you need to go to, to get a, a driver for it. The other one that's available freely is um, ASIO for all. And you can find that at ASIO, the numeral for all, A L L dot org, O R G. If you need to make changes to the latency, you can do that here. I'm not going to get into it. It's it's one of those trial and error kind of things and you may also go out to the internet and you might be able to get some good advice on how to set that up. Let's look at file folders. This is where uh, Ableton keeps its files, its recordings, its temporary files, and a cache folder which it uses internally. And we don't really have to worry about it. Library is where it's going to store your files. This one is putting it in my user area library under Ableton. And um, this one here is where the uh, packs are. You can purchase more instruments and sounds and accessories and they will be stored in, in uh, this directory. You can change it if you like. I don't. Plugins, this is where it's going to look for plugins for instruments and sound effects and all. And you can switch them on and off, tell it to search your computer to find them. There is also something called Record um, Warp Launch. And this says that my computer is working with uh, WAV files. That can be changed to AIFF. I'm going to stay with WAV files. It says I'm going to use 24-bit, but you can also change it to 16 or 32-bit. This says uh, count in. Whenever I start a recording, it starts the metrodome and gives me a lead-in of four bars. The others, uh, arm, solo, I do not change. I take the defaults on all of those. And the last tab has to do with licensing. You can read through these also. And we'll close. So we'll close that. Now let's look at connecting and setting this up further. So this is a very general connection we have now that you can see that there's input coming from from the keyboard and from the pads. But you notice if I hit a key or I hit a pad, both of these will blink. And I want to set it up differently. I want to be uh, more specific. So instead of listening to all instruments, I'm going to tell it to listen only to the world instrument. And down here, the same thing on track two, listen only to the world instrument. This first track is going to be my um, piano. And I know that I want to, it's on channel one. So if I Hit on a key, you can tell the input is coming from channel 1. If I hit a pad, the input is coming from channel 3. So I want to go with channel 1 for my um, piano. And I want to go with channel 3 for my drums. All right. Now, they're working. If I hit, if I hit um, a key, I get only channel 1. If I hit a pad, I get only channel 3. So to the first track, I need to assign an instrument so I can get some sound out of it. I go over here. I can click on instruments. I can click on instrument rack. I can go down to piano key, keys and click on drop that list by clicking on the triangle. Anytime you click on an instrument, it plays a sample. The 
one I want is this one, Grand Piano. Now I can double click on it and it will put it into uh, this tray or I can drag it and I'm going to drag this one. And there it is. Now if I hit keys it plays loudly. So that's my piano. Now I'm going to set up my drums. And I'll go over here and pick drums. And the same with these. I'll play samples for you of each set. This one has a clap in it, you can hear in there. This one sounds like it has a heavy bass and cymbals. Let's go with uh, 909. And I'm just going to double click on it. And there is my drum set. Now it says uh, 909 and it says uh, Grand Piano up here. The way the drums work, is each time you tap them, it'll tell you which drum you're picking. So this is the kick, you can see by the little play symbol. This is a rim shot, snare. Clap, snare, kick, and this is closing a hi-hat, and this is a nice thong, thunk, nice thunk of a tom-tom, low. You can also listen to other samples in the set by clicking on these little play keys. And you can also swap them out, but uh, I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> We're just going to do the basics. Now that we have that done, let's go ahead and um, look at, at recording. Recording is really pretty easy. Here is our piano. Here's our drums. All right. I'm going to set this to in. Sometimes I have a little bit of trouble uh, getting the instruments to come on. On automatic, I'm not picking any, up anything, so I can click on in and force it to work. And my drums are still working, and they're on automatic. So that makes it simpler for me. There are th three controls up here. This one is stop, this one is play, this one is record. In order to record from an instrument, you have to click over here, and that turns red, and that means that that one is armed and he's ready to record. All right. If you click twice on the stop button, it'll go back to the start position. I'm going to click on record. This is my lead in. and I click on stop and it stops it. My pointer is over here so I click on it again and it'll go back to the beginning. I went ahead and switched it from in to auto and I'm gonna click on play. And I'm gonna stop it there. And that's all there is basically to recording. These are characteristics or attributes of my piano and they are adjustable. 
if you, you can do it with the mouse, for instance, easiest one to do is volume. You click on it, and as you're playing, if you if you click, hold down your mouse and go up, it'll get louder. If you roll it down, it'll lessen. So I'm going to set it back to, to zero. Now, these are very sensitive, and sometimes it's difficult to get it <clears throat> exactly on zero. You can also click on these digits here, press zero on your keyboard, and enter, and it's done. It'll adjust it exactly to where it is. Now, we could also um, do it using the knobs and the sliders on the keyboard. To do that, we go over here to MIDI and we click on MIDI. You'll notice that all the colors change. That means he's waiting for a command. This is where our uh, uh, it'll show us what we've done. I'm gonna set these four knobs, the last four knobs, and the last four faders. And to set them, all you have to do is click on the one you want to set and then move the knob that you want to assign to it. I'm going to assign knob number 8. And it will log it up here. It will show you that that is control code 72. And it is from the piano. That's the reverb. And these are the minimum and maximum values. Let me go ahead and do the others. Here are the uh, controls I set. They're, they're different codes, 16, 17, 18, 19, 72, 73, 75, 79. This is what they're controlling. And now I'm just going to move my fader and I can adjust it by moving the fader. And something that we need to discuss or tell you about is that these controls, before you, okay, what I need to tell you is whenever you go to change a control, take note of its value. Here's this one. We're going to work with the reverb. And so we're going to use the reverb knob. And reverb is sort of like an echo. And when I touch it, the control, the value, is going to change. And it may jump dramatically until it gets into sync. All right. So here's, here's uh, the normal setting of 10. And notice how it jumped to 0. Now it's got it back to 10. I'm going to set it to 35. And you can hear it's a little bit more echoey. It gets more echoey and max is 70 you can hear how echoey and this is for a, a spatial um, kind of delay or echo in a small room there'll be very little echo in a larger hall there'll be more echo A big church might have a lot of echo in it, and you can you can you can hear that it 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 kind of lingers. Now uh, I'm going to set this back to ten. The two that work together are attack and release. Attack is how quickly it reaches full volume, which is almost instantly because on a piano a hammer hits the strings and you hear the sound. 
Now, release is how long the sound continues after you let go of the key. So if I hold the key down, the note continues until I let go of it. Now, if I shorten the release, the, the key ends abruptly. If I go to maximum, after I let go of the key, it continues on even though I have my finger off the key. And this is different than reverb because the reverb is is the the note bouncing off the walls, and uh, release is how long it takes to go from full volume back to zero. Well, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned something I know I did. This is a, a really great uh, little uh, MIDI controller. The World Tuna Mini. And um, if you've enjoyed the video, please click on like and give me a thumbs up. And if not, you can give me a thumbs down. That's okay, too. Uh, comments. I really want, want to know what you think about... Uh, this MIDI keyboard or other keyboards that you might have that are uh, interesting and different. If you're not a subscriber, click on subscribe. And if you want to be notified of each new video as I release it, click on the bell and you'll get a notice. Well, I really appreciate you watching and until next time, take care.